Welcome to Rich Thoughts TV. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Bev. On this program, we're going to talk about... Focus. Focus. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about seven distractions to avoid so that you can focus on what God would have you focus on. That's it. Have, have you ever met somebody who was educated beyond their intelligence? <laughs> People who think they know more than they know, or that they always have the right answers, no matter what. I've met my share of Christians who feel they're more spiritually mature, advanced beyond us ordinary Christians. I suspect that somewhere in the Bible, I don't suspect, I know there's some verses that talk about self-gratification or spiritual pride. At one point, I remember, honey, having a conversation with someone who said, I heard you talking about focus. Did you know that that word is not in the King James Bible? Now, to be honest, my first mental response was less than a spiritual one. But fortunately, I regained my spiritual focus before saying that the word focus is in the Amplified Bible one time. God's Word translation, 28 times. Message Bible, 28. New Living Translation, 4. He quickly said, that may be true, but it's not in the King James Bible. I tried to kindly point out that while focus is not translated as such in the King James Bible, it is most certainly there. And I should really thank this guy because he's the reason that we're doing this particular teaching. That's it. You know? And uh, so that he's no longer a thorn. Not only my flesh, but anybody's flesh. So let's go take a quick trip through Philippians 4. Verse 1, classic amplified. Therefore, my brother, whom I love and yearn to see, my delight and crown of victory, thus, say, thus stand firm, my beloved. Thus stand firm. Mm. Otherwise known as... Stay focused. Focus. Verse 6, classic amplified. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request with thanks thanksgiving, continue to make your ways and wants known to God. That's it. In other words, stay focused. Stay focused. Verse 7, living Bible. If you do this, you will experience God's peace which is far more wonderful than the human mind mm. can understand. Think of that. Here it comes. His peace will keep your thoughts yes. and your heart quiet and at rest as you trust in Him. Meaning you are focused. focused. Verse 8, classic Amplified. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and honorable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there's any virtue and any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, yes. think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. In other words, focus. That's right. With all the distractions of this electronic age that we, we live, live in, in we could easily spend valuable time, yes. energy, and resources on things that have nothing to do with our dreams, goals, and vision. The scenario is what used to be referred to as majoring in the minors, or simply said, hmm. wasting time on things that won't change the quality of your life or the direction of your life, otherwise known as losing focus. focus. That's right. You know, the first example, honey, is literally in Genesis 3, 1 through 3. And it says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of the, every tree in the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the tree, of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. 
The enemy broke Eve's focus by distorting the truth, which he often likes to do. As far as we are told through the scripture, God didn't say, neither shall you touch it. We don't know. Lest you do, you know, he said, don't eat it. Because the enemy broke Eve's focus on God's instructions, she was distracted from the truth. And then in Genesis 3, 4 through 6, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, but God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good, she's changing her focus, honey. That's it. Good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it unto her husband with, with her, and he did eat. So once again, we see that the serpent breaks Eve's focus and says, oh, you shall not surely die. Actually, he was only telling a half truth. She did not die physically, but she died spiritually. Eve was distracted by the fact that the tree was good for food. Um, it looked pleasant to look at. She was focusing on that. And even more so when she took a bite on the devil's you know, assertion that she would now be wise as wise as God. You know, Eve not only broke her focus, but then she got Adam, who was with her, to break his focus as well. We need to remember that no one can give us something that is beyond God's ability to give to us. Whatever the world can give us, God gives better gifts. We don't need to break our focus on that, for sure. When God decided to destroy the face of the earth, he gave very specific instructions to Noah who stayed focused on the specifics that God gave him, even though there'd never been a boat built on, you know, planet Earth that there was not for the water to come in, right? As Noah worked faithfully, there are those who came and inquired what he was doing. Whenever God gives you truly an assignment here on planet Earth, there are always going to be those who try to come along and distract you with their, you know, from your vision, giving you another vision. Say that one more time. Whenever God gives you an assignment, there will always be those who come along to distract you from your vision. That's we need good. to be on guard for that. We need to remember if we lose focus of what we've been given, the enemy has an enormous advantage over us. If we lose focus, then we go, well, we could be negative by speaking doubt and unbelief about what God has called us to do. In life, we either live by faith or fate, but we can't live by both. So let's look at a New Testament example of people losing focus. Acts chapter 3, verses 2 through 4, mm. classic Amplified Bible. When a certain man crippled from his birth was being carried along, who laid each day at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, so that he might beg for charitable gifts from those who entered the temple. So when he saw Peter and John go away, about to go in the temple, he asked them to give him a gift. And Peter, verse 4, Peter directed his gaze intently at him, and so did John. And they said, look on us. Now, that may seem a strange thing for Peter to say, look at us. Of course, the King James, King James Version says, look on us. Why did Peter say this? Because man was obviously looking at them. Peter was wanting to redirect the man's focus from the money to their words. Amen. Because the man's miracle was going to manifest through words mm. and not through money. Wow. As the man focused his faith on Peter's words, something supernatural happened. Peter took the man by the hand and stood up on feet, stood him up on his feet. The man instantly went from being a lame beggar to a healed praiser mm. because of his change in focus. That's it. Distractions, well, they're going to come in life. But when we get distracted, we break our focus. In doing so, we easily forget that the Word of God reveals what it reveals is ours. Wow. 
Proverbs 4, 25 and 26. 4, 25, 26. Classic Amplified. Let your eyes look right on with a fixed purpose and let your gaze be straight before you. Mm. Consider well the path of your feet and let all your ways be established and ordered aright. Proverbs 4.27, 4.27, New Living Translation. This is good. I know, I love this. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Mm. No matter how long it takes, hold fast to the word and your confession of faith because God will never fail you or disappoint you. I love that. It's not our words, it's in the Bible. That's right. Numbers 23, 19. Mm -mm. 23, 19. One of the best scriptures in the Bible. Because when you know this is true, you know everything else. It falls That's in true. the line. That's right. Yep. 23, 19. Classic Amplified. God is not a man that he should lie mm. or tell or act a lie. Neither the son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, mm. and shall he not make, make it, it good? good? I love it. What God has promised us, yeah. you, me, all of us, will come to pass when we keep focused on his word. Mm. However, if we allow the enemy to break our focus off the word, then we'll begin to sink. Or as the saying goes, as I was a Baptist boy, We'll begin to backslide. Matthew 14, 28 through 31. 14, 28 through 31, New Living Translation. Then Peter called him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified. And began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Mm. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? Wow. Several observations about Peter walking on the water. First, the scripture says, Peter went over the side of the boat. This was not a rowboat, a kayak, or a slim little dinky dinghy. It was a big boat. That's right. Second, Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water. As long as he was walking on the water, looking at Jesus, looking at the word, he didn't sink. Third, but when Peter allowed his circumstances to distract his focus from Jesus, he began to sink. He became moved by the wind and the waves. Fourth, when we allow distractions to break our focus, we become terrified. You know, and that's just, <clears throat> excuse me, one of so many examples, really, we could use in the Word. But let's go a little further. As we were reflecting on Peter, we were really stirred by seven things that can happen to distract us and break our focus. First, we fail to, uh, we fall victim, really, to our circumstances instead of being victorious over them. That's huge. If we feel overwhelmed, about what's happening around us, the turbulence of life. You know, take comfort in Isaiah 41.10. I like this. 41.10, this is in the Message Bible. Don't panic, I'm with you. Mm. There's no need to fear for I'm your God. I'll give you strength, I'll help you, I'll hold you steady, keep a firm grip on you. That's so incredible. I wanna tell you, if you're going through tough half times, mm. stormy water, or Winds or, you know, Storms whatever. of life. Storms of life. Don't panic. I'm with you. Amen. Don't panic. I'm with Bill. That's it. Don't panic. I'm with Tyler. Personalize this verse mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Second, so. we will be double-minded, oops, when we lose our focus. You read that one. James 1, 8 and 9. James 1, 8 and 9, classic amplified. For being as he is. A man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolute. He is unstable, unreliable, and uncertain about anything he thinks, feels, or decides. Mm. Third, we will feel intimidated and insecure when our focus on God is broken. Philippians 1.28, 
And the classic Amplified says, and do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries, for such constancy and fearlessness will be a clear sign, its proof and seal to them of their impending destruction, but a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation, and that from God. Amen. Fourth, confusion and chaos will enter our lives when we become distracted or break our focus, if you will. Mm. Romans 16, 17, 16, 17, classic amplified. I appeal to you, brethren, to be on your guard concerning those who create dissensions and difficulties and cause divisions in opposition to the doctrine, the teaching which you've been taught. I warn you to turn aside from them to avoid them. That's it. Strong. Fifth, without our without focus, we will be unstable. James 4 8, classic Amplified Bible says, Come close to God, and he will come close to you. Recognize that you are sinners, get your soiled hands clean, realize that you will have that you have been disloyal, wavering individuals with divided interest, and purify your heart of your spiritual adultery. Wow. Well, and sixth, we will never experience lasting success if we are unable to remain focused. First for, Peter 5, 8 yeah. in the classic Amplified says, be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times for the enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Have to watch over things. Yes, you do. Seventh, without focus, we will live a life filled with fear and doubt. Mm. Mark 11, 23. I love that. Classic Amplified Bible. Truly, I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says yes. will take place, it will be done for him. Wow. One more verse. We like this one. Mark 9, 23. Yes. New Living Translation. What do you mean if I can, Jesus asked? Anything is possible if a person believes. Amen. Here are seven principles. That's it. To keep you focused on your future. First, focus requires a reference point. We can't think of a better story or illustration about the necessity of focus than the one found in Hebrews 12 in the Message Bible. We'd better get on with it. Keep your eyes on Jesus. That means focused, right? That's it. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. We have to have a reference point. Our reference point is Jesus. You know, you know, in the nearly 7 million miles my husband's traveled, and I've traveled a few myself, with, um, we can tell you that every single flight, we wanted to know that the captain knew <laughs> at the start of it where he was going. Where he's going. And his focus was, you know, where we're going to end up. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. That's it. Second, focus requires effort. Yes, it Focus does. requires a conscious mental decision to do whatever is necessary. That means you may have a job description that only requires, that only requires you to, to do a certain amount of effort. But when you see it is necessary to do more to make sure the overcome is successful yes. and you do it, you put yourself on a level for success. Amen. While others may criticize, complain, and seek to find and enlist fellow commiserators, the one who will survive to success, the one who will overcome adversity, mm. is the one who maintains their focus. There are going to be moments when unexpected things occur. Now, I'm not speaking them into existence. I'm just telling you that the enemy is aware of your goals, your commitment, That's and right. your focus. Amen. Third, focus should be taught and modeled early. What's your assignment or your life's purpose? The scripture teaches us to train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. What are we teaching our children to focus on? 
We are teachers, either consciously or subconsciously, truthfully. Children are going to imitate their parents. If your daily focus is on any and everything that's on television, then your children are going to duplicate your choices as their own. Wow. If your words are focused on criticism of your church or your pastor or your spouse or others in authority, then your children are going to act and behave in the same manner. Absolutely. Studies show that the male children generally treat their wives in the same way their fathers treated their mothers. This lends credibility, really, to the old saying that more is caught than taught, and we know that's true. If your children see that your personal relationship with Jesus is the greatest focus of your life, then they're generally going to follow that pattern also. Hallelujah. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Fourth, focus must be filtered through priorities. There are going to be moments in our lives, despite our best efforts, that we tend to focus on the wrong things, perhaps things that aren't a part of our vision or goals mm. that we've established for ourselves. Our focus should be filtered through the achievement of our goals. We have to continually inspect what we expect so that we can be perfect without defect in the things that matter to us and more importantly, to God. Oh, yes. Amen. Five or fifth, Focus can be strengthened. The best way to strengthen our focus is found, well, in a King James Version, honey, which we like King James. Philippians 4.8, it says, think on these things, and then it lists them for you. What you focus Wait, on. Think on these things. That's it. Focus. Focus. What you focus on will expand in your life. As believers, we are to be protecting what we are reproducing in our imagination. We have a whole teaching on that one. Yes, we do. 1 Peter 1, 13. Your focus can also be strengthened by associating with people who help you think on the right kind of things. Stay away from negative, toxic people. And I, we realize that, unfortunately, some of these folks are family members <laughs> or longtime friends of the family, yep. whatever. But the point of it is this. In Proverbs 13, 20, it gives us some very good, well, advice. In the New Living Translation, it says, Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. We can strengthen our focus by what we think and by who we associate with. Absolutely. Six, God is focused. Should we be any less? There Luke 2.49, Luke 2.49, Classic Amplified Bible. And he said to them, how is it that you had to look for me? Did you not see and know that it is necessary as a duty for me to be in my father's house and occupied and about my father's business? Mm. If something's important to God, then it needs to be important, important to, us. to us. That's right. You want to, he wants you to have more than enough. When it comes to focusing on our future, Jesus gives us specific instructions that's good on how to ask ask and receive matthew 7 7 ask and it shall be given unto you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened to you mm. hallelujah and you know really it says in the actual greek it says keep and keep on asking seek and keep on seeking seventh focus will produce the faith we need to accomplish our goals and dreams in Luke 17, 5 and 6, the Living Bible, it says this, One day the apostles said to the Lord, We need more faith. Tell us how to get it. If your faith were the only the size of a mustard seed, Jesus answered, it would be large enough to uproot the mulberry tree over there and send it hurling into the sea. Your command would bring immediate results. Wow. wow. Focus strengthens faith, which produces miracles. So how do we achieve our, achieve our goals and dreams in 2022? By focusing on the Word of God. This next scripture says it all. Man. I love it. Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That means focusing on the Word, right, honey? That's it. And we will find the answers. We'll find the solutions to the problems and make 2022, an amazingly, 
magnificent year, right? Absolutely. So what is your favorite saying? When it comes to focus. That's it. Seven words. Says it, says all. it all. These seven words are key to your success, your financial future, your happiness. That's it. You ready for them? Write them down. You've probably heard us say them before. I remember when God gave them to me. It says, read your Bible. Do what it says. Read your Bible. Do what it says. If you don't like where you are, read you your Bible. Change it. Do what it says. That's right. Change your focus and things will change. And changes the way you. you think. Yes, it will. Mm. No doubt. Go to HaroldHerring.com and, and look where it says Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. Click that button. Yes. And you get the phone number of the 13-minute conference call we do every morning. Every morning. 13 minutes. And you dial in and you get, you can jumpstart your day. That's it's absolutely right. amazing. Check it out. Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. Also, make sure you support WHFL TV. They bless so many people. Amen. Just send them a gift. Ask God what he'd have you so. And until next time. That's right. God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts from the Word of God. We love you. We appreciate you. Bye-bye.